For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ has sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I am up at Calvin Crest for men's camp with some of the other men from the church. So I'm preaching by video this morning, obviously. And I'm continuing my sermon series on what we sometimes call the threefold office of Jesus as prophet, priest, and king. Those were the three roles in the Old Testament that God used to shape his people into a nation that would be a blessing to all the other peoples of the earth, and Jesus combines all three of those roles. We've already seen throughout this series, especially in the readings from Hebrews, about how Jesus is our priest. He offered himself as the perfect and permanent sacrifice for our sins. And now we've started to explore how Jesus is also a prophet. At the end of our scripture today, we saw that Jesus is the one who will bring God's salvation to those who are waiting for him. Bringing salvation is exactly what a prophet does. And of course, Jesus does this permanently and perfectly, but we're still waiting for that salvation to be complete. Now, that's actually the thing about prophets. Prophets, all of them in scripture, including Jesus, had to do a lot of waiting. A prophet's job wasn't just to show up in these dramatic moments and speak God's word. Most of their time was spent waiting, often in the wilderness or some unpleasant circumstance, waiting for God to show up and speak to them and give them the message of salvation for God's people. Prophets spend a lot of time waiting. Moses had to wait in the desert. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel... Even Jesus waited for 40 days in the desert, being tempted by the devil before he started his ministry. God's prophets who speak about and bring God's salvation always spend a lot of time waiting. Waiting is part of a prophet's ministry. Now that's tough for us. The idea that ministry or that waiting can actually be a, a necessary part of ministry because we don't like waiting and we're bad at it. Waiting feels unproductive. It feels useless. It feels like empty, meaningless time. It's frustrating at best and we get very impatient. Years ago, the Houston airport was having a problem with complaints about how long it took for people to get their luggage at the baggage claim. So they made some adjustments, they hired new staff and did some other things, and they got the wait time down to an average of eight minutes from getting off the plane to getting your bags, which I think is actually pretty good. But the complaints kept coming. So they did a little bit more research and they found out that it was taking people about one minute to get from the plane to the luggage carousel, and then about seven minutes just standing there waiting. So they moved the arrival gate for their planes to the furthest one available and routed the luggage to the furthest carousel away from the plane and rerouted the path so that it took longer to get from one to the other. So then people had to spend about six minutes walking and only about two minutes waiting for their luggage, just standing there. The complaints disappeared. People were fine waiting the same amount of time as long as they were moving, as long as they could feel like they were doing something 
productive. It was the standing around part that they couldn't handle. We're afraid that waiting is a waste of time. That's why we struggle with waiting in general and waiting on God in particular. We feel like nothing's happening. This is a waste of time. What if God doesn't even show up in the end? We're afraid that we're wasting our time. But nothing could be further from the truth. Waiting on God is never a waste of time because it turns out God is with us in the waiting. By waiting on God, that's when we get to spend time with God. That's when God's Spirit is going to work on us and making us more into the image of Christ. It happens in those long periods of waiting between the more pivotal, memorable moments in our life of faith. Most of our time is spent waiting, which means most of our time spent with God is spent waiting. You can think of it kind of like a marriage. Most of the time spent in a marriage is not getting engaged or walking down the aisle or any of those other pivotal moments in the relationship. Most of it is getting up and making the bed, going to work, going shopping, doing the dishes, vacuuming, standing in front of the exact cupboard that your spouse is trying to get into. Most of marriage is just that in-between stuff. It's the waiting. And yet that is precisely when we get to be with our spouse. That's when the relationship is really happening most of the time. It's the same with the life of faith, with our life with God. Most of your relationship with God will not be these climactic mountaintop moments. It will be ordinary, routine, daily life where you feel like you are waiting for the next big thing when in reality, yes, you're waiting, but you're waiting with God. And God is waiting with you. God is with you in the waiting. And if we skip that, eager and impatient for the next thing, we miss an enormous opportunity just to enjoy God's love in our lives. We also risk missing a great opportunity for ministry. Not just God's ministry to us, but our ministry to others in Christ's name, because waiting presents sometimes the very best opportunity we have to do ministry in someone's life. When someone is waiting, like maybe some of you are today, waiting for God to show up, waiting for an answer to prayer, waiting for a job, waiting for healing, waiting for guidance, whatever it is, when someone is waiting, the very best ministry we can do is often just to sit and wait with them. Over the years of being a pastor, I found that one of the most profound and wonderful and difficult places to do ministry is the hospital waiting room. I mean, it's a whole room set aside just for waiting, and it's usually waiting, wondering if you're going to get good news or bad news. It can be an awful time, and yet a time of being profoundly close to God. And the very best thing I have found to do with people who are waiting in the waiting room is just to wait with them. It's just to sit, not to have the answers, not to make it a profound moment. It's already a profound moment. God is with them. Sometimes they just need someone to sit with them and help them know that. Waiting with people who are waiting is sometimes the very best ministry we can do. Friends, waiting is never a waste of time. In fact, waiting is one of the holiest things you can ever do with your life. You could spend your whole life waiting for God, and it would not be a wasted life. So wait on the Lord and watch as he brings you his salvation. 
through Jesus Christ. Amen.